I was in an elevator and uh, this guy had gone on a trip to like Ecuador or something. He was in the elevator and he said something about how they couldn't take pictures of the locals because they were afraid that a camera would take away your soul when they took a picture. And I was like, oh, you know, I've heard that before. It's like a trope that's existed in a few other films and stuff. And I thought maybe there's a fun way to play that. Oh, it's weird, it's trippy, it's violent. Like, well, let's do this. This was a guy that had a lot of psychological scarring before the film even starts. It's just trying to basically get his life uh, back together. You know, he's trying to have some sense of stability. He's trying to maybe start a family and um, he's moved back to his hometown. Then the camera comes into his life and uh, starts to de derail his plans. We meet Claire when she already lived with Jack and his situation for over a year. She has given so much that she cannot give anymore and she wants him to get better. I play uh, the main guy, Jack's uh, best friend. As his buddy, I'm trying to be there for him and take care of him. What I love about Jack is he's really struggling and coping with his PTSD in a way where I think we really acknowledge that this guy's been through a lot of um, traumatic, uh, you know, moments abroad. And, you know, I think a photojournalist, though, completely has the uncensored palette, so to speak. So they get everything. The things that we don't see back here, they're seeing it all. Aaron and I both wanted to handle the PTSD as realistic as possible and try to make the first 30 minutes of the movie kind of grounded so that the audience is not sure if this is maybe the, <laughs> the ultimate uh, unreliable narrator, so to speak. Why Jack has to go down this path is quite simply, he believes it's gonna keep his fiance alive. Now, whether or not that's in Jack's head or whether or not there's, you know, this malevolent force within a camera that's pulling strings, again, is kind of left for the viewer to figure out. What I wanted to do was take an ordinary person and put him in extraordinary circumstances to fight for love. It's an allegory to love. Ready, and action. <laughs> Cut. Beautiful. He's there and he comes back and that's it. Guys, that was fantastic. Yeah. All right, moving on. I do love to play detectives. I love, I love, I think I would have done law enforcement as a, if I hadn't done acting. It's always fascinating to me how they followed their hunches. I think she's really on a passionate mission to make sure no one else gets killed. She's quite aware of what's going on and yet she doesn't have the legal power to stop it. The first time I read the script, it was really thrilling. I, I liked the characters right away. And then I talked to Aaron and he said, well, you gotta, you know, they're gonna be burning, burning bathtubs and stuff. And I was like, okay. It's my first horror film and I've never done one so far. And it's amazing, I love it. Horror movies are exciting, man. I mean, especially when you get to be a grown up, that you don't have these huge moments where things are really scary or exciting all the time. My favorite part about working on the film thus far is just Aaron's enthusiasm. It's so great working with a, a first time writer and director because he has such a really clear vision of this sort of nightmare that's unfolding. I, I really hope the viewers, when they're done, feel a little uneasy, you know? I want it to feel like a punch in the gut and you're like, okay, wait a second. Like that was, that, that was sad. I saw where we got to, it got really dark, but there's something more to this and I, there's a thread here that I don't know that I'm following and I want them to kind of maybe start to try and unearth some questions to give them maybe some answers that they weren't aware of might actually exist in the film. <laughs> 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 <laughs>